Hi everyone, meteorologist Danielle Noyce here for the One Degree Outside Weather Network. This is your insights video, gonna take you through the start of the weekend and there is lots to talk about. Matt had you covered with the ice this morning and I do think there'll be some lingering icy spots this evening through the interior. We're gonna talk about that. Rain tomorrow, heavy at times, chance of thunder with the warmth that comes in. Damaging wind gusts, 50 to 60 miles per hour, some gusts higher than that. So damage is likely, we'll break down that. Ski country, I know we get the warmth and the rain that comes in, but the cold and the snow will return as early as tomorrow evening as the colder air comes back. We're going to flip over to snow. I'll have this snowfall accumulation map for snow and ski lovers out there. School days ahead for the kiddos tomorrow. It's a day where with the warmth coming in, you don't have to have a heavier or winter coat for them because we do jump into the 50s and 60s in spots. So... I'd say have the raincoat, the umbrella, maybe not even because the wind gets strong later in the day. You don't want that umbrella to flip inside out. It'll be fine in the morning. Thursday and Friday, the cold returns with the feels like temperatures in the 20s and even teens. So that's the day you get back to the winter coat and the hat and the gloves. Meanwhile, we've got this dynamic system coming in. We took a look at the jet stream yesterday. Upper level winds steer our storm, act like a thermostat. It's diving into the southern plains, going to grab some Gulf of Mexico moisture. Look at that ripping right over us during the day tomorrow on the warmer side of the front. Storminess steered right over the northeastern United States. It shifts offshore by the time we get to Wednesday night and Thursday. Then we are on the colder side. So we'll return to that chilly, kind of typical winter air mass. There is a brief ridge that comes in for the end of the week and the start of the weekend. Sunday, there's a little dip that comes in. But do you notice the difference, right? The jet stream dynamics just not quite there. It's not like it's a huge dip or a ton of energy coming in. So any storminess that comes in our direction for Sunday into the start of next week will be less organized, but we'll keep you posted on that. All right, let's dive into the details here. Predictive radar this evening. See how there's still a little pink showing up? My concern here is north and west of Boston, outside of 495 into central and northern New England. There will still be a few pockets of light freezing rain or freezing drizzle that may create some slick spots before that warmth surges in during the overnight. It is gonna rain and rain hard at times during the day on Wednesday. See the deeper yellows and oranges in here? So some downpours, I can't rule out some embedded thunder. Now there'll be some lulls in the action. It's not like it's pouring the whole day, but look at even by midday and early afternoon, a number of downpours around, pockets of rain, and there have been pretty consistent signs now that a broken squall line tries to develop and sweep through between about 5 and 10 p.m. from west to east. So my concern if this does happen is there will be some damaging wind gusts within this and likely some claps of thunder. So don't be surprised. By tomorrow evening, as early as 7, 8 o'clock, that cold air is coming in. We're flipping to wet snow across western New England with elevation. The heaviest rain ends right around, I'd say, or just after midnight in eastern New England with clearing coming in after that and some pockets of snow showers upslope in the mountains during the day on Thursday. Coming off of Lake Ontario, we're going to get some pretty good lake effect here and some of those snow showers may come into northern Vermont and even make their way into far northern New Hampshire. So let's talk ice. Let's talk rain totals. Let's talk snow totals. We'll start with the ice. So for accumulation this evening, we are talking about a very light glaze. Notice northern Worcester County, southwest New Hampshire, northern Berkshire County, up into the elevations of Vermont and New Hampshire. So few hundredths, maybe as much as a tenth. All it takes is a trace to slicken things up. And notice the pink that extends all the way from the Lakes region, Mount Washington Valley, and then stretching up into northern Maine. As much as two tenths in far northern Maine that fall through the overnight tonight before that warmth can come in. So we had actually had some pictures that came in this morning of the snow and a little crust on top because of that icing. That threat remains through this evening. Now, Precipitation totals, a widespread two to three inches of rain is likely. Now, I will say there have been some signs that from eastern Connecticut into western Rhode Island, see three inches in Groton, don't focus on the exact number, but there have been some signs that some four or potentially five inch amounts in some localized areas may come down. So I do think localized flooding concerns during the day tomorrow, if you're traveling, there's going to be big puddles, hydroplaning, road spray kicks up. So just leave some time to get to your destination. Uh, the localized flash flooding, I think, threat is fairly low, but I can't rule it out completely because there have been some signs there may be some locally higher totals. The greatest that, uh, threat for that would be during the early evening hours tomorrow. All right, let's talk wind. It ramps up tomorrow, gusting over 30 miles per hour along the south coast by late morning tomorrow. 
Look at that. By midday to early afternoon, boom, much of the southern half of New England is gusting over 40 miles per hour. And just like I showed you yesterday, there have been consistent signals, too, that with this low-level jet coming in, the wind out of the south, by the evening hours, we get this burst of wind that goes 50 to 60 miles per hour from the Worcester to Boston to Providence stretch. I can't rule out some gusts 60 to 70. I think it's isolated, but the South Shore, the Cape, perhaps Eastern Essex County, maybe even briefly along the South Coast. Watch how that wind expands across Central and Eastern Maine during the evening hours. This is the actual cold front. So as the wind shifts around out of the West, you'll notice the wind throttle back tomorrow evening behind the front throttling back. It's not 50 to 60, but we are still gusting 20 to 30 miles per hour behind the front. So still some gusts over 60 possible late evening tomorrow from Cape Cod into eastern Maine. In fact, we may gust over 40 miles per hour until the pre-dawn hours on Thursday in eastern and down east Maine. So yes, some pockets of outages. Scatter damage is likely. I'd say the worst wind is about 5 to 10 p.m., a little longer in eastern Maine. Thursday, it's a blustery feel, but it's no longer a damaging wind. 20 to 30, 35 mile per hour gusts in some of the hills. All right, predicted snowfall. So ski lovers, snowboarders, snowmobilers, we get back into the cold air. And in fact, by tomorrow evening and night, look at this, all the way from the Berkshire stretching into Southern Vermont, we're talking about widespread one to four inches with higher totals here across uh, Southern Vermont with elevation and then into Northern New England from Jay Peak back up into Wildcat, Breton Cannon, we are going to get some upslope that continues with the cold air going. We get the snow guns blasting again with the coating to an inch or two likely across far northern New Hampshire and into northwestern Maine and the crown of Maine. While we don't add a ton of accumulation, that cold air does come back. So that's as the front sweeps through. Colder air on the backside. We're going to be measuring the snow in feet and portions off of Lake Erie and Ontario again heading into the end of the week. High pressure builds in temporarily for us to end the week. So Friday's quiet, Saturday's generally quiet. There'll be some high thin clouds that come back into play. Temperatures running in the 30s, so definitely a chilly feel. Saturday, sun and clouds, and then the next system, again, fairly disorganized, but may come through Sunday into the start of next week, so we'll keep you posted on that. Now, we are not going to hit records tomorrow. The record to beat in Boston, for example, is in the upper 60s. But we see an unseasonable surge of warmth come in. 50s and 60s out of that wind out of the south. And then as it shifts through, colder air comes back Wednesday night. Although I'm not overly concerned with um, a freeze up in many areas in eastern New England because we stay above freezing. Inland, there may be some icy patches on anything untreated as we dip either side of about 30 degrees. Thursday, we don't get out of the 30s in many areas. Lower 40s in eastern New England, that wind making it feel about 10 degrees colder. It's no longer a damaging wind threat Thursday, but it will be breezy. Thursday night, cold, teens, 20s for many of us. Friday, we don't get out of the upper 20s and the coldest spots of northern New England. 30 to 35 for many of us, mid to upper 30s along the south coast. Friday night, some single digit overnight lows in the north country, teens and 20s for the rest of us. And then Saturday, many of us running in the 30s to around 40 in southern New England. Meanwhile, Pats are at the Cardinals this weekend on Sunday. State Farm Stadium, remember they get the retractable roof, but they're not going to need it. Temperatures in the 70s and 60s, very light wind, lots of sunshine as well if you're going to be watching the game or maybe you're headed down to Arizona. Now, all of this storminess you can watch on our app. It's free in the App Store and Google Play. Just search Noises One Degree Outside Weather, and of course, we'll keep you posted on our website, the number one degree outside.com and social media as well. Thank you.